What are you doing? I kept grinding. I thought we were just sanding it back. So the countdown is on. We're under three weeks before we splash. Yep. 18 days. 18 days. So that looks like we're gonna splash mid-June, move mm -hmm. aboard right away, and then yeah, we'll be off. We'll spend a couple months around here, around BC, around Vancouver Island, and then pew, we're heading south, baby. Yeah. Mexico, here we come. Yeah. Look out. Look, Look out. out. Here Nicole's we family's <laughs> coming. <laughs> I'm Kate, and this is my husband Mick. Our kids, Thomas and Bentley, and my parents, Kevin and Shauna. We are three generations coming together to create the Cruising Maraki Project. Hey, hey, hey. So it's kind of an exciting day. Today is the first day of actually repairing our blisters on our boat. This is the first time doing this. And yeah, we're just gonna start off today and see how far we get and see how our method works. Yeah, so we have probably a third of the blisters, would you say, that need fiberglassing repair because they we had to grind them back deeper through the gel coat into a couple layers of fiberglass so we're going to build up those layers of fiberglass again and then fill yeah fill them just use that. a fairing compound to to make up the rest which is only going to be really slight and then there's some that don't need any fiberglassing and they'll be super easy to repair we just slap on some fairing and then sand it and make it yep. look pretty step one is to mark the blisters with chalk so first i just went around and circled all the ones that we want to refiberglass the rest will be fine just to uh, fairing compound fill. And then I've actually written numbers on them all and that's how many layers of mat we're gonna glass in. Now when Mick was asked, how did you know how many layers each one needs? He told me he pretends he is the hole and imagines how many layers of glass needs to be built up within him. Be the hole. I am the hole. Mmm, layers. Three to be exact. So for the average person that can't imagine being a hole, I'm not really sure how you would figure this out, but according to Mick, you can imagine being the hole. I don't want to glass all the way up to the surface or beyond, because the epoxy will be impossible to sand through and take a really long time. So I want to come just below the surface, just take care of the structural stuff, and then we'll, all we'll have to do is sand the fairing compound. So this is day one. We've never fiberglassed or anything before. No. But we've researched and we feel like we know what we need to do. So hopefully. Yeah, it seems like a pretty simple process. It's just all about prep, keeping things clean, using the right materials, and then it should be good, I guess. Step two is to trace the blisters onto some parchment paper so that you can then bring the parchment paper over to your fiberglass mat and cut it out the right size. Simply place the parchment over the blister. Your first piece of fiberglass, you want it to be slightly smaller than the full circumference of the blister. And this number here, when Mick went around and chalked everything, tells me that he wants six layers of fiberglass there. So I kind of feel the blister and see where the next indentation is, where it goes deeper, and I draw my next layer there. You want them to be pretty close together. And I know I need six on this one. And then I just feel again, and I can feel it goes in again right here. Sometimes there's ones that need this many layers, and it, they, they get to such small little pieces. So then instead of doing a really small circle here, I would do two of the last circle. We're numbering each blister. This is 14, the last one I did. So this one will be 15. I write it on the hull, and I write it on the inside of here. That last little cutout here will go with the pile of fiberglass, so when Mick picks it up, he can correspond it to the number that I've written on the hull. 
Okay, so then I come over to my sweet cutting table that Mick made me. And you simply cut out the largest of the blister first. And I would be wearing a mask, but it's hard to hear me. Typically I do a whole bunch of blisters on the parchment at once, and then I come back and I cut them all. Cut it out, then cut down the parchment to the next size, cut that out, etc., etc., until you have a nice little pile of fiberglass like this. So this is for blister number two on the haul, and you can see all the different layers there with the smallest piece on top, and that just gets set aside. We put it in a bucket here so it doesn't blow away, and then later you'll see Mick come pick that up and place it on the hull. It's a pretty cool system. Step four is acetoning the blisters. Just give it a good clean surface for the resin to adhere to. It also gives it a good degrease as well. Uh, this evaporates really quick so it's a great, great cleaner. And when you're acetoning as well you just want to make sure you keep turning your rag over just so you're not moving any contaminants from blister to blister. Things like any acids, grease, dirt anything that could like you know be on your rag and then you push it into the other one so keep turning the rag over nice and clean. Step five is mixing the epoxy. I'm using system three silver tip epoxy it's a two-part resin one part hardener um, these handy little mixing cups are great the two parts we're running low on these so I actually filled the one part with water and uh, the two parts area and then just marked lines on these plastic cups so I've already preset like six of those, so we're gonna use those today. Once we've got the two parts in there, it needs a roughly, I don't know, minute, between a minute and two of stirring. Good stirring, make sure it's all mixed in, right into the corners as well. Now step six is to wet out the blisters with epoxy. They're all nice and clean now with acetone, so we just go ahead and dab in the epoxy and squeeze it into all the uh, joints and little cracks. And this just like bonds any fiberglass fibers and layers and soaks them and just gives it a good waterproofing, good sealing. And then also the slight tackiness makes it easy for the first layer of cloth to go on. And then step seven is I've got all my lovely little pieces of cloth that Kate's cut in order. Number one corresponds with the one on the hull. And I just turn it upside down and start with the biggest one first. Let's press that on. Apply some more epoxy and you'll see that white cloth start to disappear and go transparent. That means it's all soaked in and then you're ready for your next one. So I've got the first one in there and then you just repeat for all the layers heading down to the smallest one. This one's got four, so that's the second one on now. And then once all of the layers are on, I've got a little roller just to uh, squish everything down, get any excess epoxy out and any air bubbles. And then that's a wrap for that blister. So that's the process and approach that we've decided to, to take. Yeah, that's pretty cruisy and easy. And then you'll see the steps following this with the fairing compound and getting everything nice and level and smooth. Yep, that will be later this week and uh, yeah, more to come. Two parts of this and one part of this to make the ultimate glue. Less than 10 to go. Really? I finished cutting and yeah, this side was way easier. We finished before lunch today. Yesterday was like an eight hour day and today was just a breeze. Woohoo! That felt so good. Doesn't it? Yeah, it's really good. I'm hot and I'm itchy and I'm a bit sweaty. Yeah, look at that nice sheen happening. You are glowing. Shiny. And then I'm sparkly too, like my shirt from all the glass fibers is sparkly. Good morning, we are on day three of repairing our blisters. 
today um, Mick's just going to give us a quick overview of what I'm supposed to be doing and then dad's coming to help me actually accomplish it today which is awesome because then Mick can get back inside and finish off Captain Kevin whatever you're finishing off inside I don't yeah. even know <laughs> so today's goal is to get all the blisters covered with fairing compound we're going to start at the stern of the boat and work our way to the bow so the first step will be to acetone every single cavity both the ones that we've patched and the ones we haven't patched. Welcome to day three. This morning, we are acetoning each and every blister so that we can put another layer of epoxy on and then start bearing each and every blister. Once that's done, we'll be going through and getting some unthickened epoxy and just wetting out all the surfaces, both patched and unpatched. Dad's taken over acetoning for me and I have started doing a fresh layer of epoxy so that the fairing compound can go straight on. Kind of like I'm an acetone. Okay. <laughs> oh, he's crazy. We've got all the blisters wetted out with epoxy. Uh, time to break for some lunch, let it set a bit. You want to apply the fairing compound when it's just a little bit tacky but it's looking pretty good. Now the reason we picked the epoxy we did, which is the System 3 silver tip, is that it can be recoated straight over previously epoxied areas within 72 hours without any need to sand or wash out the patch. So it's now been 48 hours, so we'll be able to just epoxy straight over those patches that we did on Saturday, and the epoxy will adhere, and then the fairing compound will be able to adhere straight to the uh, epoxy after that. Okay, just some minor drama that the other side, the epoxy started to dry before we could get the filler on it. But now all three of us are working at it. It was just me before and I wasn't fast enough. But now we're smashing through it. And I can get this coated later. No dramas. Check it out, she's coming along. We finished all the fairings yesterday. We actually need to do about three layers of fairing so today we're sanding it back and doing the second layer and then tomorrow we'll sand it back again and do the third and final layer. It's a long process but it's gonna be worth it. never felt so beautiful but seriously my hands are numb they are like vibrating <laughs> and my arms are so sore I just kept thinking now I kind of understand why tradesmen are so strong because that's a lot of work just the tool is heavy on its own let alone when you're reaching up above your friggin head okay well wrapping up day five Dad and I got uh, all the second coat of fairing sanded down. I don't think we'll need a third coat, but there are some that didn't set properly, so we gotta redo them. Dad's a rock star. It was a brutal oh, day. Man. Good morning. So it is technically day six of blister repair. Me and the boys weren't here for a couple days. We were um, at my parents' house packing up the remainder of our stuff in our rooms and organizing the stuff that we're gonna put into storage. We're back, technically day six of blister repair. Mick has been busy um, working on the big hole that I think we have shown you. What are you doing? I thought we were just sanding it back. I kept, I kept grinding and grinding. Okay, we have to back up, back up. Okay. What was, what was here? What was the problem? Uh, there was a zinc here. On the inside, they had a piece of hardwood that was glued 
like it was through bolted the zinc was through bolted through that piece of wood and, and we just took the zinc off so that we could paint under it right? well no the piece of wood on the inside was starting to rot and it was a bit soggy so i just thought i'll undo the bolts and i'll reattach a new bit of wood i undid the bolt the uh fiberglass was like a little volcano on the inside and i could actually just get my finger and Okay, scrape so, it away it was really yeah, soft it was not good and so you started by just saying i thought we were just grinding it back so we well, could patch it up okay i kept grinding and kept grinding and i just kept finding more like it was just flaking apart like look how soft that is okay it's crumbling fiberglass isn't supposed to do that <gasps> i can't believe this yeah oh my gosh it just means more hours it doesn't set us back it just means longer days i'm not missing our date so we've cut out the rot and Mick's working on repairing that now. So day six blister repair, what does that look like? I am going to go around and paint all of the previous, we shouldn't call them blisters anymore because they're not blisters anymore. We're going to paint all the repair spots where the fairing is with a two part epoxy barrier coat. It's like paint with epoxy in it, is that how you would explain it? Yeah. It'll dry really hard. Then the hole will all be ready for the bottom coat. Okay, so Mick is working on the hole repair and he's got some fiberglass mat that he's cutting out. Yep, so on the inside, there's gonna be about three or four layers, roughly this size. Like there's a hole there, right? So it's just gonna be flapping about, but I'm gonna tape the outside of the boat so at least this can rest on. And once this is set, I'll pull the tape off, which will give me a good starting point for the outside, which is where I've done the most grinding. Well, that was lucky. I was just about to start mixing epoxy and laying glass and I went, crap, the camera, Kate's gonna kill me. Um, I put a few more layers on the inside. I just felt that the divot from where the tape was, it's just a bit too much. So I put like another eight layers on the inside. So I'll mix some epoxy and I'll start laying them up. Right, so yesterday you saw me put the uh, final layers of fiberglass on the big hole that we were patching. And what you didn't see me do was when it started to tack up later in the day, I actually put a quick coat of fairing compound on it. Uh, and then that dried overnight and I just sanded it off then. It looks really good. For only one coat of fairing compound, I actually came beyond the surface with the glass so we didn't have to use much of it. But listen to this. sound all the way through so that's really thick right there i'd say there's about nearly an inch of glass right at that middle point there where the pole was so now i'm going to do another quick layer of uh fairing compound over this but i'm just going to give the last coat of primer on this patch right now and that will be ready for bottom coat okay so if we had done it right straight through it was six days to repair the blisters that doesn't include the five days of grinding mick did the first week the boat came out of the water yeah it was pretty much that yeah i mean the bottom is pretty much ready for bottom coat now yep so that feels really good it does feels really good so i yeah, guess we pulled up and had a look at it a few minutes ago and i was like oh but like the whole thing's just smooth now yeah, it's patchy because of the primer but that's good. So we have under two weeks left at the dry dock. We've got lots of things to finish up and then paint the bottom. Yeah. And then we splash. Exciting. And it is exciting. So yeah, hopefully this episode of fiberglassing and fairing wasn't too boring and maybe you learned something. Yeah, I think you will. <laughs> I learned a lot this week. <laughs>